Hey there everyone, Udal Dori here, and welcome to our Block Spotlight video on the inventory panel from Ender.io. Now, the inventory panel is one of the latest additions in the upcoming version of Ender.io, version 2.3.0 to be exact. Now, as of this video, Ender.io 2.3.0 has not been released as stable yet, meaning you will have to download some beta releases of Ender.io to actually access this feature before it's been released as stable. Now, there's a link in the description and on the Android wiki page to the Jenkins build website where you can download uh, beta releases uh, constantly being updated there as well. So you can get new releases uh, there every once in a while. Uh, but, you know, just in case 2.3.0 has been released as stable as of this video, there is also a link to the CurseForge page in the description. Now, before we actually jump into building these setups ourselves and doing a lot of cool stuff, uh, you should know that you're going to need some basic knowledge about the Ender.io item conduit networks before you actually use the inventory panel. The panel itself is very much based on those networks, so make sure you have some basic understanding of how those work. Now, what the inventory panel itself does is it allows remote access in those item conduit networks. You know how you build these gigantic conduit networks in Android.io and you have inventory spread out all over the place, maybe hundreds of blocks away from each other. Um, sometimes you just want to access all that stuff from one location and previously that hasn't been possible with just Android.io. However, with the latest addition, the inventory panel, it's not possible. So let's take a look at some basic recipes here. This feature adds two new items. Firstly, we have a new upgrade for the item conduit called the Remote Awareness Upgrade, and it's re really simple to craft. You need four conduit binders, you have three silicon, one IO vendor, and one electrical steel. That's going to get you one of these upgrades. Now, despite use for the item conduits, these are also used in the crafting of the inventory panel itself. Now, the panel is crafted with four dark steel, two pulsating crystals, one of those remote awareness upgrades, a sentient tender, and a fluid tank. If you think these recipes sound complicated at all, you can always use not enough items to uh, look them up in game. You can dive into the recipes there, or you could always uh, look at them on the Android wiki page, which there, of course, is a link to in the description as well. All right, now one last thing before we actually start building these systems ourselves. I just want to give you a basic look on what the inventory panel actually will enable you to do. So what we have here is an inventory panel uh, with fluid and item conduits hooked up to the back. Down here we have a tank and some inventories. And when we go ahead and open up the interface, this is what we'll see. Now what we'll be able to do is access all these items here. Uh, we could go ahead and take some cobblestone out, we could craft a furnace here. And you'll see here that now we have two furnaces and now we got three. So uh, we can put stuff in this area here to uh, for it to actually return into the system. But, you know, obviously this is not all that we can do. Now I'm going to show you the rest while we actually build these systems. And we'll get into that right now. Now, naturally, the first thing we do to set one of these systems up is set up the power required for it. Now, the inventory panel is powered by nutrient distillation, also from Android.io, and uh, you can find more information on that on the Android.io wiki page, of course. Uh, so I've just put down a tank here, filled it up with some nutrient distillation. We'll go ahead and pipe this out with some uh, fluid conduits into a panel that we'll put, let's say, right here. Now you can put down the panel by just right-clicking on any block, really. And you can put it on a block, under a block, side of a block. It really doesn't matter how you place it down. But just make sure that you connect the conduits to the back of the panel. You can't connect them from the side. You see here that that doesn't work. Not from the from the front either. It, it, they do show uh, a connection sometimes, but they don't actually connect. So that's a bug right now. Uh, just make sure you hook it up to the back. So now the interface shows that we have fluid down here. Right, the tank is filled, all good. We've got the powers all set up. But the tank, uh, sorry, the inventory panel says it's offline. Why is that, you may wonder? Well, we don't have any inventories connected. Obviously, we're going to need some inventories. 
So let's go ahead and put down some item conduits here, and let's go ahead and place down some chests over here. We can put one down here, put two different chests like so. We can put, uh, let's go ahead and put a barrel here as well. You know, any inventories will work. So we could go ahead and take a deep storage unit. It really doesn't matter what inventories we use. Uh, so let's go ahead and fill these up with some items. Let's take this iron, cobblestone, stone, pipes. I don't know, we'll take a whole bunch of stuff. Let's go ahead and put the iron all in here. Go ahead and put some cobblestone in here, like so. We'll fill this chest up with some things like so, and then we put that there. All right, cool. So now we have some inventories connected, and you know, these are connected to the item conduits. But the inventory panel still says offline. Why? Well, what we need to do is we need to add these remote awareness upgrades that we spoke about in the beginning. We need to add these to every connection to an inventory. So right here, we can open up the conduit connector. You'll see now that there is a new slot for the remote awareness upgrades, specifically. We can go ahead and place one of these here. And now, all of a sudden, the inventory panel is not offline, and we can access our stone. So let's go ahead and put these back. Well, not back. We never put them in, but let's go ahead and place one of these in each connection, like so. One thing that might be worth taking a note of can be that you would rather want to set the item conduits to insert rather than to extract. This because the extraction mode is more performance heavy than the not so performance heavy insertion mode. You can also see if you take a look at the uh, tooltip text for the remote awareness upgrades that it allows the inventory panels attached to this network to see and extract items from this inventory independent of the conduit mode. And it also says here that we don't actually need to set the mode to extract. You'll see now that all the items we added are available in here. It's really pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and add some more items as well. We'll do this. Now add some of this here. It really doesn't matter what way we put them in. They're all going to be accessed from here anyway. So that's that. One thing you'll notice though is that the return area doesn't actually return any items right now. When I showed you the return area uh, in the beginning of the video, you actually saw the items getting extracted and put back into their corresponding inventories, but that's not happening right now. Why? Well, if we read the text here, it says that items placed here can be extracted by an item conduit but will not be used for crafting. And we'll get to the crafting part later. But what this means is that this inventory here, these 10 slots, are the inventory panel's internal inventory, right? So it's eyesighted, meaning we can extract these items with a conduit. And we have one of those connected, obviously. So uh, let's check this out. Yeah, it's set to extract with a redstone signal. That sounds good. So for demonstration, we'll go ahead and put this lever here. And if we flip this, they should go away, right? They're still here. Because we don't have any valid destinations. So this barrel here, that's where we want the cobblestone to go. So let's go ahead and put an item filter in here. Well, first off, we're going to have to set this to basically in out meaning we can actually uh, uh, both insert and extract items remember what i said earlier though unless you actually need the extraction feature make sure you set this to insert and not to in out if you do need extraction set it to in out otherwise just go with insert we'll go ahead and put an item filter in here and we'll say that we want cobblestone to go here Let's give it a priority of three or something. So now cobblestone should wind up here. And yeah, you actually see the cobblestone going here. Very nifty. Let's also go ahead and uh, set up a filter here. Uh, let's go ahead and set this to only allow these four kinds of ores, like so. Now we put these ores here and they wind up here. We can also give this a priority of two or something just to make sure that it also, well, always winds up here. 
Uh, what we can do here is we can go ahead and set this to allow only iron. Yeah, I think you get the gist. It's very simple. And then this chest here can be our all around chest. So we'll just set this to allow everything, no filters. So there you go. Now we can go ahead and put items here and they will be put into the system. Now, since we have a chest here as well, allowing everything, we could put new things into it. Uh, we could go ahead and put these basic item filters in and they will be extracted and put into this chest. Same goes for the remote awareness upgrades. Now you can also go ahead and click this return area text here and that's going to change into a storage area. Now the difference between the return and the storage area is that the storage area uh, is not eyesighted, meaning whatever we put here will stay there, right? So this stuff can't be extracted. We click it, change it back into a return area. You'll notice that the cobblestone is beginning to be put back into the barrel. Click it again, now it stays. As goes for the crafting part of the inventory panel, there are many different cool things that you can do. Now, first off, you can obviously go ahead and use the crafting grid as a normal crafting table. That's some really simple stuff, but you'll also notice that two new buttons appear when we place a recipe down. So this button here says that we can learn the current crafting recipe and that it allows for refilling the grid uh, with items from the network. So let's go ahead and learn the recipe. So you'll see it changes into to, to another button and you'll also notice that behind the items is now a template, right? So we have some ghost items right here. Now, when we click this refill button here, it's going to steal items and try to refill the grid with enough items for one crafting operation. And it's gonna try to steal the items from my own inventory first. So it's gonna try to take the cobblestone from here before it actually moves on to uh, taking items from the network. So click this once, steals eight cobblestone from here, right? So we can just keep clicking and you'll see that the cobblestone in my inventory is almost out. There you go. And now we can keep doing it. And now it moved on to taking uh, cobblestone from the network. Pretty nifty. We can also go ahead and uh, shift click this button. You'll see that the image there changes when I hold shift. So we can shift click it. That's going to try to fill the grid with as many items as it can for as many crafting operations as possible. All right. So the cobblestone we had was enough for 21 furnaces. Pretty nifty. And then we can go ahead and click this clear button here. It's going to move all the items here into the return area and uh, remove the template. So that's pretty cool. Now we can also set that template here by viewing the recipe in NEI and clicking the question mark. So just like so, the template is set. We can start filling items in and do so. You can also go ahead and shift click the question mark and that'll do the same thing as shift clicking this thing did. It's gonna try to fill the grid with as many items as possible. So simple click is gonna set the template and a shift click is going to uh, fill the grid. Pretty cool. All right, so uh, there was another button that I spoke about. You'll see a little plus sign up here. Uh, all right, that was the ghost item. <laughs> all right, so uh, we place a recipe down. You'll see a little uh, plus sign up here, up here which says that we can store the current crafting recipe and that a maximum of six recipes can be stored. So this is pretty simple stuff. We go ahead and click plus. It's going to show, uh, show the item that the recipe crafts. So in this case, that's a chest. And this is gonna stay here, like, unless we delete it. So it's there, we can click it once uh, to fill the grid uh, with enough items for, for one uh, operation. So we can make a chest and you know the template is still here we can re remove the template but basically the thing up here remains we can also shift click this to fill the grid with as many items as possible so that's basically the same uh same thing that we did before and it's pretty cool so let's go ahead and add some more recipes we can fill that out with 
a furnace recipe, we can add the furnace like so. Let's go ahead and add another recipe. I think you, you get the gist. It's pretty simple and you can have a maximum of six of these. If you want to remove them, just right click. There are also many different ways of displaying items in your network. Now, first off, you can obviously go in and search this. Uh, so you can search it for anything you want. Let's go and search for ore. You'll see all the different ores. Uh, you can search for iron specifically. We'll get the iron ore and the iron uh, transport pipes. Search for uh, cobblestone or yeah, you get the gist. It's a simple searching function. Now this is obviously more useful one uh, once you have a system that is much bigger than this one. This system is pretty small and you can see all the items, but if you have a big network with basically all your items, this can be very useful. Now you can also sort uh, the items in a different manner. Basically, normally it sorts the items by name. So in alphabetical order, it starts with the basic item filter. So that's B and then A. Then you have the chest, C, so a, B, C, 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 D, and so on. Now click this to change it. So now it starts at the end of the alphabet. Not sure why you'd like that, but now it basically is a reversed order. You can also sort it by mod ID. So now it sorts uh, items by mods. So uh, first build craft, then we have ender IO, then we have Minecraft, and then we have thermal foundation. So it sorts the mods in alphabetical order, and then it sorts the items uh, in alphabetical order as well. So it's pretty cool. Again, you can just reverse the order. And then you can also sort the items by quantity. And I think that's pretty self-explanatory. We have uh, the biggest amount of iron and the smallest amount of chests. And we can reverse that as well. So starting with the lonely ones. <laughs> pretty cool. Now, uh, you can also enable any eye sync, meaning that what you search for here will be searched for in NEI and the other way around. So we can search for ore and that's going to display ore down here. We can also go ahead and search down here. Actually, that doesn't work. Uh, but basically what you search for up here will be searched for in NEI. So you can search for furnace, right? So, and then we, we realize that we don't have any furnaces. So we can go ahead and view the recipe and set a template and so on. Okay. Uh, as of this moment, there seems to be a bug, so it's always enabled, right? So I turned it off and it's still on, but that should be fixed pretty soon. I do have an update to you uh, regarding the NEI bug, though. Just the day after I recorded this video, a new build was uh, released on the Jenkins site, uh, fixing the issue. So you'll see now that I can search here uh, without NEI following, and I can turn the feature on. And there you go. Now it does work. So that's pretty cool. That's fixed. Now, one last thing that you can do is you can view items with item filters. So let's go ahead and grab some of the item fil filters that we made. Right, so we can go ahead and put an item filter up here. And now it'll only show the items that are inside that item filter. Pretty cool. We can put this one in. And you see how that works. So let's take a look at some numbers and see if we can figure out just how much power this thing actually uses. Now, as you know, the panel runs on nutrient distillation and it uses this to generate RF for its internal buffer. Now it does this in the same manner as the zombie generator does. And that means you're gonna get 800 RF per each millibucket of nutrient distillation. Now then it's gonna use this RF in two main ways. Right, so each time you interact with the panel and extract items, it could be just extracting one item or 64 or whatever, but for each operation where you actually uh, take something out of the system, that's gonna cost you 32 RF, right? And then you're also gonna get charged with 12 RF per each item extracted. So extracting 64 items, that's gonna cost you 12 RF 64 times. So this basically means that extracting 64 items 
is going to require different amounts of energy depending on how many operations required, right? So if we extract 64 items in one go, that's going to cost us 32 RF for the operation plus 12 times 64 RF for the items. And that's going to give us 800 RF in total, which is one millibucket of nutrient distillation. Now, extracting 32 items two times, that's still a total of 64 items, but that's two operations. This, so this means we're going to have to pay, well, pay, <laughs> use 32 RF two times, plus the 64 times 12 RF, giving us a total of 832 RF. So there you go. Some basic calculations. All right, everyone, I think that is going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, but most of all, I hope that you enjoy playing around with the inventory panel. Again, if you want to mess around with this, make sure that you play around with Enderio 2.3.0 or above. Links to everything that you may wonder can be found in the description, as well as links to my social media, my Patreon page, and so on. Okay, again, thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you guys again. Bye bye. Hey there, you! Thanks for watching the entire video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I would appreciate if you would like to support me by liking the video, subscribing to my YouTube channel, as well as following me on Twitter and supporting me on Patreon. Again, thank you guys for watching.